Hello, welcome to my laboratory. You know, I've got this great idea. How does electricity flow when I take this screwdriver, insulated of course, and touch it to these two electrodes? Well, that's because electricity always flows in a circle. We call it a circuit. In metals, um, electrons flow because they're not held onto very tightly by metal atoms. And so the metal atoms allow their electrons to run around. But is there something else we could use to conduct the electricity to complete this circuit? You've learned that there's other kinds of particles that are charged, like electrons. You spent a lot of time memorizing those ions. I'm sure you've enjoyed every single one. So here's one, sodium chloride. I dissolve sodium chloride in water, and if it dissolves it ion, as ions, those ions could be free to move, and let's see what happens. Ah, look, it's very bright. It's a very strong conductor. So this solution of sodium chloride conducts electricity. Hmm. Well, we better wash off those ions with my special chemistry teacher's cup. Well, you know, we should probably try water. Maybe it's the water that conducts electricity. So here I have some water from the lab. It's called deionized water. So do you think it has ions in it? Let's see. There's nothing. There's no ions in there at all. So it's deionized. It's just pure H2O. There's no free ions. I know. You're wondering what about tap water. Okay. Let's see if tap water conducts. Does tap water have ions in it? Well, let's see. A uh, few. Yeah, there's some ions in that tap water. And um, you see those ions. In, uh, that's what's left over. If you let a glass just dry, it gets all the white scales on it. Those are the leftover ionic compounds. If you don't dry off your car after washing it, it gets all the white crust on it. Those are leftover ions from the tap water. So if you rinse your car with deionized water, you, you won't spot. So tap water has ions in it. And maybe you think, ew, that's yucky. Well, what are the ions in tap water? Let me tell you, iron, calcium, magnesium, are those bad for you? No. But I know you would rather you would rather use pay extra money for this kind of drinking water. So let's see. The drinking water you buy at the store has ions in it or not. What do you think? Let's see. Mm, there's a few. Less than tap water. So even in Arrowhead, there's some ions. A lot of drinking waters are simply just deionized water. They have nothing in them at all. Let's take a look at something else you might like to drink. Gatorade. Does Gatorade have ions in it? Well, let's see. Yeah, quite a few. In fact, Gatorade is what replenishes these Ion in your your uh, system called electrolytes, and you need electrolytes. Those are substances that conduct electricity when dissolved. You need those in every single cell of your body. Your cells work because of electrolytes. You are an electrical person. Okay, so let's rinse off with our special chemistry teacher's cup which is getting pretty full here. I don't know if you're sad because you miss me. But let's try sugar dissolved in water. So this is sucrose, C12H22O11. Um, you know that sucrose is in Gatorade. What about when we dissolve it in deionized water? Let's take a look and see. 
Now, what do you think? Well, let's try it. Nothing. Hmm. Well, that's because sucrose is a non-electrolyte. Sucrose stays together as molecules when it dissolves in water. Sucrose is molecular. There's no ions present. There's no free ions floating around that can conduct electricity with the sucrose. Hmm. Well, what about this? Hydrochloric acid, HCl. Hydrogen and chlorine, they're both, they're both non-metals, so they have a covalent bond between them. Hmm. So I guess they're molecules. So would it be more like the sodium chloride or more like the sucrose? Well, it's molecules, so I guess I would say it'd be more like the sucrose and it wouldn't conduct at all. Well, let's just try it out. Oh, it's bright. Well, that's because hydrochloric acid, even though it's a molecular compound, it dissolves as ions. The hydrogen ions and the chloride ions completely separate 100%, and they form ions in the solution, and there's no hydro hydrogen chloride molecules in here at all. It's totally, it's a molecular compound that ionizes. So this is a strong electrolyte. Again, an electrolyte is a substance that in water, when it's dissolved, conducts electricity. So let me rinse off my electrodes again. With deionized water. And let's try sodium hydroxide. Here it is, NaOH. What kind of compound is that? Well, you had to memorize the ions, sodium and hydroxide, so let's give it a try. Let's see what happens. What do you think? Ah, right, it's a strong electrolyte. It's a soluble ionic compound, sodium hydroxide. It's not a salt like sodium chloride. It's a base, and it's a strong base because it produces so many ions in solution. Strong acids, like Hydrochloric acid and strong bases, those are strong electrolytes. Well, if there's such a thing as a strong acid, do we have anything that's a weak acid? And what does that even mean? So, you know what this is. It's vinegar. And you put it on your salad with salad dressing. It's in uh, mustard. It's in ketchup. What do you think? You probably wouldn't want to put a strong acid in your food. Let's try. Oh, you can see. It's not as bright. That's because acetic acid is a weak acid. Why is that? What does that mean? That it's a weak electrolyte. Well, acetic acid mostly stays as molecules. Some of those molecules, only a few of them, actually ionize into hydrogen ions and acetate ions. So in the case of a strong acid, all the molecules come apart as ions, 100% ionization. With a weak acid, only some of the molecules become ions. They're very important, though, because that's what we use in our food. And you wouldn't want all those hydrogen ions on your french fries. Okay, what about a weak base? There's only one weak base that we're asking you to know, and that's ammonia. Uh, ammonia is in stuff like Windex, except my producer here told, reminded me that this is ammonia-free Windex. But anyway, Windex used to at least have ammonia in it. So let me see if I can find my ammonia right here. This is molecules of NH3 dissolved in water. Again, it's molecules, but let's see what happens. Oh, some of them became ions. So some of the NH3 reacted with water, stole a hydrogen from the water, and left a hydroxide behind and an ammonium ion. 
So there's a few ions left in there, ammonium ions and hydroxide ions, but it mostly stays as NH3. Okay, um, here's something you might have at home. This is alcohol. I've got a 2% alcohol solution. The formula is C2H5OH. Is it a base because it has OH? Let's see. 2%. It's about the strength of a light beer. Nothing. That's because it stays as molecules. The OH is covalently bonded. No ions at all. So alcohol is a non-electrolyte. No ions, all molecules. Now, I have one here I wanted to show you. Sodium chloride. But I wanted to show you, because you know sodium chloride as table salt. So we know that sodium chloride is a strong electrolyte, but what about just in the crystalline form? Will it conduct? Let's see. Nothing. So does that mean that this is a non-electrolyte? No. See, it is an electrolyte. Because electrolytes are substances that when they dissolve in water, see, there's no water here. It's the water that opens the ions and allows them to flow freely and conduct electricity. Here, the ions are stuck in the crystal. So there's no conductivity. Sodium chloride is always an electrolyte, but it's not always a conductor. It has to have water present. Okay, here's one more. What happens if I take the acetic acid that's in vinegar and the ammonia that's in Windex and I react them? I react a weak acid and a weak base. I'm going to get a salt. When you react acids and bases, you get a salt. And this salt would be ammonium acetate. So I better have ammonium acetate here somewhere. Here it is. It's a salt. Ammonium ions and acetate ions. We reacted two weak electrolytes and we got a strong electrolyte. So anytime you react an acid, an acid and a base, you're going to get a salt. And if that salt is soluble, it's going to be a strong conductor. So what we learned today is that conductivity is any time you have charged particles that are free to move. We also saw that water, pure water, deionized water, has no ions in it. Things like sodium chloride, when they're dissolved in water, are strong conductors because they produce lots of ions. So do strong acids and strong bases. Weak electrolytes are substances like weak acids and weak bases that only produce a few ions in solution. And then, of course, sucrose and alcohol, those are molecules, and they stay molecules. So they produce no ions in solution. They're non-electrolytes.